Thank you, folks. It's Lindsey Hulse with SPS, and we are back in the building over at the Bear Coleman, D.C. We in Summer League. We're back again. 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 You know, all the kids through through Beaumont, you know, at the time, because for me, it's always safety, right? You know, with, with our kids, and I know kids on the weekend were going to play in AAU tournaments mm -hmm. and stuff like that all over the country, and I never wanted a kid to come back, come in, play in the gym, get somebody sick, or make their parents or their grandparents yeah. or somebody when they go back home. And the thing about it, though, is it's still out here, right? You know, so right. it's not gone, right? You no, know, fully, but it's still there, but uh, yeah, man. Two years ago, you know, with, with that, and um, we're back again for our third year here. It's exciting. Um, how, many years, how many years has Summer League been going on? Oh, man. 20, <laughs> I think 2012, 2013. Wow, wow. Yeah. That's 10 plus years, we're saying. Yeah. Because I went, I went to uh, what made me got really engaged and involved in it. I went to the Final Four in Atlanta. Okay. I was at a uh, coaches meeting. They were talking about where kids were going to school that from uh, all across the country. So when they got to Michigan, we probably had like four or five kids that were going high to our majors. So I still have been a mean. I'm like, that's got to be wrong. So not, no. not from Detroit, not right, from Michigan. Right, right. You know, so when I came back home, I'm like, you know what? I got to do something. I got to get involved. I just feel that our kids wasn't playing uh -huh. as much, you know, as it used to. So I, I reached out. To Sam Washington at the time, yeah, it's nice to see. And I say, Sam, I got an idea of something that I want to do. I don't want to interrupt what you're doing at St. Cecilia. I want to start this summer league during the week. Mm -hmm. I want to go Monday, Wednesdays, Fridays, and then kids will still have opportunities Saturdays and Sundays right. to play at St. Cecilia. Sure. First year we did it at, at Montford. Like okay. I said, I think it was 2012 or whatever have you. We had probably 25 teams. Okay. Wow. And, and now, I mean, last year we had 75 teams as a close baby. That's wild. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So now this has become great. a staple. I, I chatted with a few of the coaches already, and they based their whole summer around yeah. coming here a couple of days and getting other things here. How does it feel to know that you have created a staple in these prep players' lives that they know they can always come here, the gyms will be full, you got ball TV? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's just what you're saying. For me, it's just how do we create this platform for our, for our kids? Right. So the conversation, you know, with me with ball TV this, this summer was, hey, I got 72 teams, 75 teams playing wow. in my summer league. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to expose our kids, Michigan kids, to the world. Sure. And they had the platform already, so it wasn't no need of me trying to reinvent mm -hmm. the wheel. Uh -huh. Let's just create this partnership, this relationship. Well, you've well, always been about partnering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And that, it will take me probably a whole year. To, to create it myself. Right, right, right. Where I can just plug in. Yeah. You know, it's it's almost like you spoke it to exist. I remember a couple of years ago, I was saying, look, man, I really want to, what is it going to take? We looked at some things and we saw what kind of huge investment it would take. Yeah. And it was able to work out that the technology and other entities mm -hmm. ahead that it was just about just letting it come together. And, it and they're not even in the Midwest. That's the wow. thing about it. So it's this is the Midwest like, representation right now. This is the Midwest. Oh. It's an opportunity for us to really control the whole Midwest. And again, you probably got two to 300 coaches that tune in to Ball of TV so they're going to get a chance to see yeah. our kids. There's a lock in recruiting. Right. In recruiting. Right. In the right. summertime. Right. You know, right. So they don't have to justify trying to make a trial or somewhere right. they can just tune in. I can tune in. Hey, DC, who's that kid right there number one and number seven? What's oh, his man. name? So, yeah. That's good. Doing yeah. great things. Uh, talk about uh, just we talk a little bit off camera about the NIL and mm -hmm. the mental health and all those things. We'll talk more about mental health but we talk before the NIL hit, now what's kind of going on? What's been your opinion of it now that it's actually here? And uh, we can put that whatever you want to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, for me, I think it's great to a uh, aspect of getting kids that are going to make some money. Yeah. I think it's still a cop out for the NCAA. What do you mean to that? Because they still have enough money to pay every student athlete. They don't have to pay anything. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But see, that's that's the scapegoat that they're using. So you still the only way they can come to that decision. Thank you. Let you go. As long as they have to come out our money. So that's still a diversion, though. That's yeah. the diversion. Everybody's not even looking at. No. no. It's not about that. You know what I'm saying? It's about how, how do every student athlete 
make money. So what about the wrestlers? Yep. What about the field hockey team or the swimmers or all the wrestlers or, you know, the lacrosse, the lacrosse teams, teams, all that, all that baseball? Who can get paid across the board by the NCAA? But instead, it's only going to be a few elite athletes that's going to get these NIL deals. And how much money are, are they getting? Yeah. In these yeah. NIL We talked about people like a, a, a Sister Reese, Angel uh, mm-hmm. Reese over at LSU, and she's taking the world by storm. I'm happy for her. Yes. But you said it's the offseason. You, you, put, you put your player hat on and said it's the offseason. But my concern, Derek, is these kids, along with the high expectations of Division One play, and, they, and managing their schedules with these appearances and all that, I mean, yeah. do you think that we may end up seeing a little bit of drop-off in play? No. no. Some of them, you don't think so? Okay. Not at all, because I still feel that, you know what, the players who are like take Angela Reese, mm-hmm. she's hungry. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. she's still you know dealing with her humble beginnings and what she's doing sure. from and sure. being able to provide. Mm-hmm. You know, what I'm saying for her family and everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think she's still on USA basketball. Yeah, yep. she had just made, she made the team this time, mm-hmm. and she was thankful for that because she had yeah. lost it in, in past years. Right. I think the biggest thing is what you have to understand when you're talking about making money is nobody sharing with those kids that the taxes you have to pay on that money. That's right. You know, that's right. So that, that, that 50 grand is not 50 grand. That 50 grand is not 50. That 50 grand is more like 25. 25? That's a luxury yeah. tax. Yes. It's a luxury. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But again, if nobody's explaining that right. to you, mm-hmm. you know, and you got to have an accountant and somebody there that can say, okay, no, you got to pay taxes on it. Right. i seen, I seen a, um, her the other day, she she got a free Mercedes. Right. You know what I'm saying? So she's doing her thing. I'm very proud of it. But again, what about the rest of her teammates? Right. You know, and she loves that. And even with that Mercedes, you know about this from your grandfather in the past. If you give away a car, you still got to pay the taxes Thank on the car. You. Yeah, so it's not that we missed it. I think that's another part of this whole discussion. It is. As far as these other things have to go. Well, it's just the educational side of it. Nobody's really talking about it. And, and, and again, why the NCAA haven't stepped in and had these classes on these college campuses with these kids, you know? So they're still being the scapegoat because they're turning all the attention to NIL, even for right. my, even for myself. Uh-huh. So I went back to, to Syracuse, reached out to the collective that you guys know, yeah. and they have a collective there at, at Syracuse where everybody on the team gets some type of stipend. Okay, you know which okay. is good. But when I reached back to Syracuse myself, I'm like, hey. I need my license at Syracuse University because, you know what, you guys are still selling my jersey Wow. 30 years later. you wow. still selling the Syracuse 44 jersey. The, the thing is, what they're not doing it, they're not putting my name on the back. back. Oh, no. I don't know. do So, I have my license with the university okay. Okay. right now. Okay. And then I'm going to market and brand, you know what I'm saying, my own. Yeah, this is for you to take your license. Not at all. Okay. I uh, reached out to them, had a conversation with them, and they were like, Derek, okay. But, uh, and again, what I'm trying to do is start the whole collective with all of my guys, Billy Owens, uh, Sean Dyer, yeah, yeah. John Wallace, yeah. Morris, Moulton, uh, Rose Moulton, yeah. Moulton, Moulton, yeah. Moulton, yeah. you know what I'm saying? That group itself will have a following within oh, itself. Okay. They have a following within itself already. You touched on it, and I want to emphasize this education part that we're not getting. And what I've been doing in my research is finding out who these new NIL agencies are and all that and trying to get understand. But you can speak from the experience. How many yes. people can say, I know what it's like. Let me take you back to not to 1990, because that was the year you had on the, the Earth Tone suit, or the drive for the Earth, or 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 the But 1991-92, what if I would have told you in 1992 that college players were getting more money than some professional players with these deals? Um, did I foresee it? Yeah. Really? I did. Because again, I mean, you think about 92, 93. I was the first person talking about a hundred million dollar contract, and everybody was looking at me crazy. Huh. Why did you? Why was you taking a hundred million? You know, like because I'm sitting there watching what what the teams are making. So if you can afford to pay me three, four million dollars a year, and not only just me, but all my other teammates on this team, how much money are you making? Uh huh. So it's not about how much you're worth; it's what you can negotiate right. for. So I was the first person talking about. No, when my contract and my deal was up, they were like, hey, we need 70 million. I'm like, no, nah, I want 100. 
what about coming from those humble beginnings, the fear of saying, I don't want to lose this opportunity for 70? What made you confident to push for 100? Because I know who I am. You know, yeah. I know what Eric Coleman is yeah. and what Derek Coleman yeah. really says. Yeah. So if you're not going to give it to me, somebody's going to give it to me. Wow. Wow. You know? And that's just having confidence in yourself yeah. and understanding, right. you know what I'm saying, who, who you are. Right, right. And, and a lot of times, you know, you understand this as well, being able to negotiate. Okay. So, I've never had an agent. I always had a lawyer my whole life. Really? Yeah. But that was another extra percentage somebody was taking well, off the top. They were taking it all off the top. But, you know, when you know that you're going one or two in the NBA draft, all of that is public information. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Right. So, what right. do I need an agent for? Right. How would I give this guy 10%? Or what I'm doing, I said, right. even a lawyer rate is negotiable. Yeah, and I've even heard that they say you would notice that sometimes after you get drafted, you don't see the agent no more after no. a contract. You don't. They come in and get theirs. That's, that's it. it. Yeah. yeah, it's funny. I'm gonna reach for my phone. I was gonna yeah. share this with you earlier. This is just random on social media. Uh, this is so cool. And I was on my way over here. Let me just pull this up. Uh, where we at? Where we at? Where we at? Here we go. Check that out. This is on social media. <laughs> AI and DC. Yeah, man. When you see this, do, do, do you have pockets? No, 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 no. What he, he did, he rolled his hands up in his shorts. Oh, no, 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 I had like five people call me, text me like, yo, yo, I can sell your shorts right now. Like, how do you do this? I'm like, no, he just had his hands rolled up in, in his shorts. Man, oh, dude, you look like a prison right here, man. Oh, man. Come on, man. That's Coleman at his best. Yeah, man. Uh, what was this conversation about? What was that? You thought pop, pop, probably the pick and roll, pick and roll. Yeah, just, just roll. talking about basketball, how we going to play. Uh -huh. You know the pick and roll. Uh -huh. People don't understand, man. Allen is such a, a great dude. Uh -huh. uh -huh. uh -huh. Give you the shirt off off his back. Uh huh. You know, Despite everything, I was so misunderstood. I thought I was misunderstood. I'm about to say you guys have some kind of connection. Well, for me. I've always had connections with all my teammates, uh -huh. you know, because I, I always felt that I would never try to let you make the mistakes that I made because I didn't have mentors uh -huh. in my first five years, you know, in the NBA. Oh, wow. You know, I mean, you, you're talking about a kid 19, 20 years old who becomes the face of a franchise at 19, 20 years. So I had Sam Bowie, Reggie Thiers, these uh -huh. guys, you know, who wasn't vocal, you know uh -huh. what I'm saying, uh -huh. like that. And it's like, shit, is your show. Wow. So wow. It's, my life has been trial and error when you talk about the game of basketball, uh -huh. you know. And, you know, me going through the ups and downs of that, but realizing that, you know what, I'm still going to have to share the knowledge with all these other guys. That's not the personal choice that you share. Yeah, I don't share that. No, no, to this day, a lot of people don't feel yeah. 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 It's not about that, man. I feel that even with these guys that are playing the base, mm -hmm. you know, if I just got some insight just to have conversations with them just about life, you know, granted, NBA is not given, but you got an opportunity, son, to go to college. D1, D2, D3, D3. D3. That's what I say yeah, yeah. all the time. Uh -huh. You got a chance to change your surroundings, mm -hmm. to get you a free education. Mm -hmm. And I realized that at, at an early age, you know what I'm saying, growing up, like, hey, man, I can really do something, you know what I'm saying, with, with, with this basketball. Let's talk about this generation, and you and I talk offline all the time about you know, controlling the narrative. You yeah. you help me with that term. I'm gonna give you all praise and props for that. Dealing with this young generation or people younger than we are about how to handle business, how to treat people. We don't come from business though. See, that's the thing. It's not their fault, man. Okay. It's okay. not our kids' fault. Okay. Because again, if we don't share the knowledge uh -huh. with them and uh -huh. get them to understand that we don't come from business. Mm. My uncle worked at, at Ford. He was the head supervisor there at, at, at Ford. Uh huh. Body and assembly right there. And, and um, on I told you you gonna stay. Yeah. Right there. Right there. Right there. Right there. <laughs> you want to deal with him? You want to deal with him? Right, 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 right. Blue mm. class. Yeah, class. yeah, yeah. You know what okay. I'm saying? Blue class. Working uh -huh. 15 of us in a two family flat. Yeah. You know, no, I'm not talking about business. No, you, you wasn't talking about business. You know what I'm saying? But I come from an entrepreneurial spirit. Yes. You know what I'm saying? I've seen my aunts, my uncles, and stuff run their own business growing, uh -huh. growing up. Uh -huh. And just by me seeing that, uh -huh. like I tell people all the time, man, image is everything. Right. You know, even from Jesus, yeah. image is everything. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Yeah. Because you program that in, in your head. Uh huh. So it's not our fault if our babies don't know. 
It's up to us to teach them. Is it challenging sometimes? It's always challenging. Okay. Because you come with such a wealth of knowledge, whether they know it or not, and you want to impart upon them, and it seems that, and I'm not saying all young people, but it seems so difficult. Maybe that's just a generational thing, period, yeah. that we all go through. I just, I just want to be able to make sure that they're taking advantage of the opportunities they have, and I guess those who do take advantage of their benefit. Well, exactly, and we know all of them are not going to take advantage of the opportunities. That's, that's just true. what you said. I was talking with one of my kids today, John R. King, you know, he graduated, and um, I mean, he dominated the whole middle school league in track and field. Okay. Okay. I mean, the fastest kid out there, right? Okay. Men's basketball, mm -hmm. play basketball for us. We won the PALS championship and a DPS championship. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Cool. And I asked him this morning, I said, man, where are you going to school at? He's like, well, I'm thinking about going to, to Warren Fitzgerald. And I said, for what? He said, well, all my teammates, you know, talk about going to school. I said, so what you telling me, you're a follower? Mm -hmm. I said, leave us leave, BJ. We don't follow. I said, you better off getting a, a, a scholarship in track and field than you are basketball. Right. Right. So if you want to go run track, you got to go to Renaissance with Darnell Hall. You got an Olympian. Yes, sir. Just interview that You got my man. Yeah. You got an Olympian over there. Yeah. yeah. That's teaching kids uh -huh. how to run. Uh huh track and get scholarships right. right. That's where you need to go to school at. Right. And you're a smart kid. Right. You right. got right. accepted right. to class uh -huh. already. Why are you going to Warren Fitzgerald? Does that have an impact on you, you think? Now, yeah, Coach, nobody ever told me that. Wow. Yeah. So I'm like, come on, man. Yeah. Leave us leave. Yeah. yeah. You know? And a lot, a lot of times, I know kids want to go places with their teammates, you know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Because you develop those yeah. friends. Yeah. But hey, you got to develop some.